Hi, I'm Lisa K. Donner, along with Joe Schaefer, Sarah Cowgill, Tim Donner, and Graham Noble. And this is The Conservative Five, Liberty Nation's online TV news program. Say what you will about undercover recordings, but the gotcha factor makes for some pretty darn good listening. That is, unless you're one of the people on the other end of the microphone. CNN execs found their rear ends in hot seat as Project Veritas secretly taped several senior staff meetings. The cable outfit did not disappoint and lived up to the slogan, the most trusted name in fake news. Jeff Zucker, president of CNN, calls for his team to go after Lindsey Graham. Another CNN head honcho calls Tucker Carlson a racist who is host of the White Supremacy Hour. Okay, guys, I want to run one of the clips from Project Veritas for our viewers, and then we'll deconstruct it. So let's hit it, Frank. On the 9 a.m. conference calls every morning at CNN, their top leadership views their competition, Fox News and Tucker Carlson in particular, as racist and misinformed. Roll the tape. I was just going to say, if you're going to talk about the story, I think it's unavoidable that you have to talk about the naked racism of Tucker Carlson. Because that's really what drove this anti-diversity push. You know, Trump watches Tucker Carlson show and then reacts. Um, and just as sort of the white supremacy hour they have on Fox News every night, I think it's, you, you can't disconnect it to. What Donald Trump did last night, for anybody who watches Fox News, he was just airing all of the grievances he hears on Fox News every night. And that's all he did. To hear all this up close and personal was a real wow. Let's begin with Liberty Nation's Washington correspondent and my better half, Tim Donner. Tim, what jumped out at you? Well, they may be attacking a target that isn't going to be as ripe going forward because Fox News, uh, conservatives are leaving Fox News in droves. It's not just the left attacking them. Conservatives are leaving as well. But, you know, this is we've seen in the Project Veritas tapes and elsewhere what CNN really thinks of Trump and Trump supporters. And the problem right now is Trump supporters, because Trump very likely looks like he will not win this election. So then what happens to supporters afterwards? This kind of stuff is going to promote what, what's being called as the Trump Accountability Project, broadly speaking, which is that anybody who supported Trump is going to be held to account in the forthcoming administration. God forbid what they might do, because as Trump once said, uh, it may appear they're coming after me, but they're really coming after you. I'm just in their way. Anybody else? And I'll tell you, and it's not just about former Trump administration officials. Like you said, it's Trump supporters. It's so easy to see where this is going to go. And CNN is going to be the uh, rabid dog leading the way. And what they're going to do is anyone who questions Joe Biden being president, that it was not a fraudulent election, is QAnon, is a crazy conspiracy group, is someone that needs to be silenced. If you still believe, don't believe in the legitimacy of Joe Biden as president, you are going to be painted by CNN as a fringe extremist, someone who needs to be banned from the internet, shut down, maybe lose your job. This is where it's all heading. So kudos to Project Veritas. Kudos to anyone exposing what they're really setting up here, which is to demonize and ostracize any opposition to their regime. Well, what they did was they created a hit list in front of everybody. They listed people who have to be dealt with. That's not news. That's not news in any way, shape, or form. And it's a hit list. And that's what the American people should take away from this, that they're going after people. They're going after Senator Lindsey Graham. They're going after Tucker Carlson. They're going after anybody that may disagree with them being the most trusted news you know, out there. And, and come on, their ratings are in the toilet, probably next to boxes at this point. So A, I think they're going after the wrong people, and B, no media outlet should be putting out a hit list, ever. You know what really struck me about the phone calls, uh, the phone call itself that we just heard was, I look at it this way, in the, in the, uh, in the arena 
uh, if you like, the cage match that is politics today. There are two types of people. Now, one type of people actually use rhetoric against their opponents to either shame them or silence them or one-up them or whatever. And then there's another group of people who have actually used that rhetoric for so long that they've come to believe it themselves. And they are the most dangerous people because they are truly the zealots. They are the fanatics. They actually believe their own lies. And, you know, you often think when you hear uh, people on the left describe people on the right as um, yeah, whatever, you know, racist, xenophobic, homophobic, whatever, you think, well, you know, they're just using that rhetoric to, to try to shame them into silence. They don't really believe that. They're just saying it. But you listen to this phone call and you realize that these people actually believe what they're saying. When, when he talks about, you know, Fox News has the white supremacy hour. Now, I weaned myself off of CNN many years ago and I weaned myself off of Fox News uh, starting probably about a year or so ago. Um, and I barely watch it anymore at all. But you, you can't honestly, objectively watch Fox News in the evening. And even if you don't agree with anything that's being said, you can't describe it as white supremacist hour. And, and the fact that these people are actually talking about it in, in what they assumed was a private phone call shows that they, they, they are fanatics now. They believe their own rhetoric. I yeah. think that uh, the next thing you're going to see is something the equivalent in, in some sort of congressional hearing in the House where the Democrats have a razor thin margin now, you're going to hear something to the effect of, have you, <laughs> are you now or have you ever been a Trump supporter straight out of the McCarthy era? There's going to be, there's going to be, you know, this accountability of, of, of Trump loyalists. I think it should be a serious concern because the Democrats have a very slim hold on the House. And if they win two seats in Georgia, they'll have a slim hold on the Senate or they'll have a slim minority. They'll hold the White House. And if you think, well, the Trump era is gone and they'll just move on and concern themselves with things in the future. I think you, I think it'd be important to think again on that. I wouldn't expect it because, again, I hate to repeat for emphasis, but it's true. It's it's not Donald Trump. It's the 62 million in 2016 and the 74 million in 2020 that voted for him. Well, for me, it wasn't the things that were said so much. You figure that's what the people at CNN are going to say. But it was the way they said it. You know, the nice thing about the recordings, and these recordings happen to be clear as a bell. I mean, you know, you didn't have restaurant sounds and music in the background. I mean, it was crystal clear. Somebody was either uh, wearing a mic or, or, or they tapped his phone. I don't know. Anyway, the nice thing about the recordings is you can hear the tone of the speaker. I mean, there was obvious animus in the discussion, almost as if they were trying to outdo one another. You know, if you think you hate Trump, I'll give you Lindsey Graham and raise you Tucker Carlson. I, that's sort of how it felt to me. It sort of reminded me of a pile on that kids do in high school. You know, if they, if they talk this way at the executive level at CNN, you have to figure that the plebeian masses are going to feel awfully good about uh, hammering down on on anybody from the right. And you know, there's something very important. I, I wish people would go to the website of the Center for American Progress. It's a progressive centrist group. Nira Tandon, who is Biden's OM, OMB um, nominee in his ERSAT's administration, um, would-be administration, um, she runs it, and they have a document on that website right now titled How to, How to Oppose the Burgeoning White Supremacy Online. And of course, it doesn't stop with white supremacy. They, they say it in the document, QAnon is a threat. Anyone who opposes vaccines is a dangerous threat. We know where this is going to lead. It's going to lead anyone who disagrees with them is a dangerous threat. And it says in this document, it's really an amazing read, it says in the document, we see see on the internet groups of people getting together and sharing their thoughts 
they see this as a threat. They see people who disagree with them getting together and communicating with each other as a threat to, uh, the word is regime. I think that that is what they're establishing here. It's a media, political, um, establishment expertise. They're building a regime here. And if you are opposed to the regime, they're out to get you. And white supremacists, that's just a term to get you in that umbrella and to silence you. And the target, like Tim said, is Trump voters, Trump supporters. Uh, yeah, I, I was just going to kind of add a, an add on to what uh, Joe said there and what Tim was saying earlier about who they see as the threat um, and, and, and why is it a threat? And I think this whole, uh, if you like, Trumpist America first policy is, is really what they see as a threat because ultimately these people are, they are kind of international socialists, you know, they're globalists and they just hate that whole, the whole ideology of putting America first is absolute anathema to them. And so yeah, sure. It's the people. It's the people who supported Trump who are the threats. But it's the idea that they rallied around, which 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 these progressives now want to kill because they see it as as an existential threat to their ideology. Well, this is just a portion of the CNN recordings, and I strongly urge our viewers to surf on over to the Project Veritas website to hear the rest. But make sure you have a good stiff drink in your hand first. That's it for our Conservative 5 panel today. Check out our other C5 shows and segments on your favorite video platform, YouTube, Vimeo, Rumble, we're on them all. As well as Liberty Nation has its own Roku channel where you can see all our TV productions. Thanks so much for tuning in and remember to surf on over to libertynation.com. Sign up for our new member zone, just $17.76 for a year. And remember, Liberty, all the time and everywhere.